So you decided to become a solutions architect working at AWS. But then you went to the AWS job site and then you see all these different kinds of solutions architect role. Solutions architect, specialist solutions architect, solutions architect for containers, serverless, partner solutions architect, cloud infrastructure architect, cloud application architect, etc. In this video, I'm going to go over what those roles mean, who are their end customer, what should you consider, or who are the ideal people for each of those roles, and more. Please hit that like button, subscribe to this channel. With that being said, let's jump into the video. So like a true solutions architect, I'm going to explain this with a whiteboard. Let's start with the most common one, solutions architect. And for all this role, based on the seniority, it could be just solutions architect, or a senior solutions architect, or a principal solutions architect, uh, but we are going to call them SA, as in solutions architect. So first things first, it is important to understand who are the end customers, or who are the direct customers for this solutions architect. So the end customers are the companies that you know and use. For example, uh, Netflix, uh, Disney, Fidelity, Samsung, etc. And this solutions architect will be working directly with those companies. So I'm just gonna put a couple names, let's say Netflix, Disney, etc. Every AWS customer will have a solutions architect assigned. If the company is very large, for example Netflix, Disney, that solutions architect will only have one customer. A SA for Netflix will only be handling Netflix because Netflix is huge and there will be many projects going on. Uh, so the SA cannot really handle multiple customers. If the company is a little smaller, you could have few of those customers. For startups, uh, you could have many startups assigned to one solutions architect. We also call them as um, account solutions architect a general solutions architect. And some time back, uh, there, there were some SA roles which have been called enterprise cloud architect. So who will be good for this uh, role? So obviously, if you worked in one of those end companies, then it's easier for you to become a solutions architect. For example, I worked in Verizon, and then I migrated some of the application. Uh, so it was uh, relatively easier for me to become a general solutions architect in AWS. Now, let's think about it. What is the skill set for this account SA? They have to have a very large breadth of services. Because let's say Netflix, right? Um, there are many projects going on and each project may use different technologies. One project may use EC2, another project may use Lambda, and another project may need to use some totally different machine learning services or analytic services, storage services, etc. So the account essay needs to have uh, like some knowledge, we call them like up to 200 intermediate level knowledge into many services. And depending on the project, the account essay will go deeper on some services. So let's say Disney is a streaming company, right? So all the services that the streaming uses, there probably comes up more in the architecture discussion. So the account essay for Disney needs to be deep on those uh, streaming solutions. So there lies uh, some challenge. So the account essay cannot be super deep on all the services. Uh, for example, just for example, one large customer is adopting uh, Kubernetes and Kubernetes is difficult. So the account SA, since uh, he's handling many different services, he doesn't have time to go super deep on Kubernetes. So what would this SA do? So they would engage something called SSA, or Specialist Solutions Architect. So Specialist Solutions Architect, and again, based on the seniority, you could be Senior Specialist Solutions Architect, or Principal Specialist Solutions Architect, and sometimes, uh, this role could be termed as uh, solutions architect dash containers or solutions architect dash service X. For the general solutions architect, you are not gonna have the names like that. It would just say solutions architect. 
but for specialist essay it would either say specialist essay SSA or Solutions Architect dash serverless. You got the idea. Disney wants to talk about Kubernetes. So this account SA for Disney will engage a specialist SA for Kubernetes. And they work together with this customer and then solve. Now, what that means is, since the specialist SA is only dealing with a specific technology, the specialist SA does not have just one customer. That is very rare. It doesn't happen. Because one customer is not going to talk about one technology all the time for all the projects. Specialist SAs will have multiple customers and generally it's like domain driven. For example, uh, there could be a container specialist SA assigned to financial services. So what are the skill set of specialist SA? Pretty straightforward. Whichever specialist SA role you are applying for, you need to be super deep on those services. So if you are uh, applying for a serverless specialist SA, you need to be super deep on the serverless services, uh, not just Lambda, right? Lambda, API Gateway, SQS, SNS, uh, EventBridge, step functions. Similarly, for container specialist SA, you need to be deep with uh, Elastic Kubernetes service, Elastic uh, Container Service, ECR, and the related services. Who would be good for SSA? So let's say you are working in VMware, already doing a bunch of Kubernetes, you would be ideal for Container Specialist SSA. Uh, you are in a company doing a lot of machine learning stuff, um, so you'll be good for uh, Specialist SSA for machine learning. You got the idea. Now, both the General SSA and Specialist SSA are going to give the solution to the customer and will give a proof of concept. But these two roles are not hands-on keyboard. We are not going to look at customer's code and not going to change code for them. What if customer wants AWS to come and code them the solution? So that's where CIA or Cloud Infrastructure Architect, funny name, right, CIA, uh, sometimes it's also called cloud application architect, but when you search for the job and then it shows pro serve, uh, like professional services, then you know this is uh, this role, like CIA. So if the companies want AWS to come and code and deploy stuff for them, then they engage these CIAs. And CIAs sometimes will work with SSA, but they also will work with Solutions Architect, the account essay. So account essay is basically the point of contact. Either you are engaging specialist essay or infrastructure architect, the account team, you, you go through and you, you collaborate with the account team and work with the customer. So CIA will come and do hands-on and actually implement the architecture in the customer's AWS account. So who, are there any fixed customer for Cloud Infrastructure Architect? So not fixed, because one customer may say, uh, I want you to do this, but this that will only take like three months. So this Cloud Infrastructure Architect will be engaged for three months. They will do the hands-on stuff, deploy it, and then they will get engaged with another customer. Uh, sometimes the engagement could be lo longer, it could take six months, nine months, one year or more. In that case, they will stay attached to that customer and they'll move on once they are done. So who will be good for infrastructure architects? So the people uh, who are like real hands-on, right? Who give solution, but they also know how to code it. So for that reason, CIS cannot be hands-on on everything. It's impossible. So when you look at cloud infrastructure architect jobs, it will clearly say what services you need to be hands-on. So for example, if a particular CIA is dealing with Kubernetes, it will say, I want you to know the hands-on implementation on uh, Kubernetes, EKS, Helm charts, customize, etc. If it is a big data or analytics CIA, it would say, I want you to be hands-on on this uh, service A, service B, service C, if it's a machine learning CIA, it will say, I want you to be hands-on on 
this search maker, this bedrock, this large language model, specific algorithm, etc. Now the last type of essay is PSA or partner's essay. Okay, so the end customer is different for partner essay than account essay, SSA, and CIA. Partner essay, the end customer are the partners. So there are two types of partners. One is ISV or independent software vendors. You could think of uh, ISVs as the products as other customers such as Netflix, Disney uses. ISV could be Datadog, Splunk, etc. Right? So they are not the end customer. They are partners and these ISV products are used by the end customers. Or partners could be SI or system integrators. System integrators could be like uh, let's say Cognizant or Accenture, TCS, Infosys, who actually work with the end customer, I'm just gonna put end customer and help them uh, implement, design, etc. So PSA, our partners SA, will work with them. Uh, so let's say for ISV, let's take an example, Datadog, okay? So whatever services that Datadog runs on, Partner SA will give solutions on those, or system integrator will talk to end customer and then they need help with solutioning and they will engage the partner SA. So who would be a good uh, candidate for partner SA? So if you have worked in a partner, you get an advantage. Because with partner SA, in addition to the technical component, there's also a business acumen that comes into play because the partners have their own goal than the end customer. So you need to be strong on understanding the business goals and implement solutions based on that. So there, and sometimes this partner says, can jump on a call with the end customer with the account essay or specialist essay. Um, so let's say customer is using Splunk and uh, the account essay really needs someone who knows ins and outs of Splunk, knows how the Splunk works under the hood, because maybe uh, the customer is pushing Splunk to its limits, how can they optimize it, etc. So they will engage uh, the partner essay. And sometimes partner essay may engage specialist essay, depending on the scenario. Okay, so the next a question I get is the salary. So which has the highest salary or what is kind of the range? All these four uh, solutions architects are in the solutions architecture family. So whether you are a regular essay, specialist essay, CIA or um, PSA, the band for the level is same, for the same location. So let's say I'm in New York. If you are a partner essay, L7 or a solutions architect specialist essay, your band is same. So don't think about where the salary is higher uh, and decide based on that. So just decide based on what role you like, what background you have, etc. Now another thing to keep in mind is based on data, the most amount of solutions architect jobs are in general essay. Because it makes sense, right? Because the most number of end customer will be the general customers. So specialist SA only focusing on specialist area, cloud infrastructure architect, same thing, partner SA focusing on partners. And there are a lot of partners, but they, were, they are nowhere close to the number of end customers in the world. So think of all the customers that run AWS, that's like way more. Also seems like AWS jobs are opening up. I see a bunch of uh, jobs in my LinkedIn feed. So start preparing 2024, make it the best year of your life. Uh, keep learning and keep rocking.